What is it? How much? 29 minutes. 12, 3, 2, <laughs> And we're live! We Woo! did it! Woo! It happened, man. It happened, I know. Yeah. Thanks so much for <laughs> hanging in there with us. What's up, everyone? I'm Peely here for Fun for Life Radio on Dash. And how freaking lucky am I that I am in the presence of an amazing singer, songwriter, ah, the one and only LP. <laughs> what's up? Hi, everyone. What Who are you? Everyone? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just, you know, relaxing. It's nice and hot in here. I like it. I know. I know. It's it, good. Yeah, yeah, you guys can't feel the heat, but it's pretty caliente uh, in here. Muy caliente. Muy, oh. oh. Every once in a while, that high school Spanish comes out. And well, and also all your fans from like Mexico and El Salvador. I'm sure they've taught you some Spanish. Yeah, you know, I got, I got some, uh, some people in the wings. <laughs> Helping, Helping you. Yeah. So, Helping me with my Spanish, I guess. Girl, what a week you've had. I mean, yeah. you had two drive-in concerts on Saturday. Yep. You performed on Seth Meyers' show on <laughs> Tuesday. You dropped a single, How Low Can You Go, today. Yeah. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, I feel like productive, you know, it's nice. Like, that's like the biggest thing, you know, you want, I, I, you know, I want in my, um, in my life, in my career, in my work, I want to, um, you know, continuously, you know, put things out, like creative um, outlets. It's just like, I mean, that's the, that's the way for me. And I, I just feel it's nice, like, I know I've, I always feel like super connected to my peeps, you know, Hi. <laughs> when, uh, when I do that. So it's like I'm always looking to do that um, at any point. You know, like I'm sitting on so many songs right now that um, it's hard sometimes to like contain my um, enthusiasm. Cause right. I'm ready to go like, you know, I'm just ready to drop a SoundCloud. You know, like just, <laughs> I'm ready to leak all my own songs. Right. You know? <laughs> You're like, so it leaked. I, I wonder I who it to, was. I have to fight that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've heard you say that some years you've written 80 to 100 songs. I'm sure you've slowed <laughs> down a little now that you're on well, tour. Well, you know, like it's like kind of like also quality, not quantity sometimes. And I, I don't like, you know, when I wrote for other people, yeah, more so. But like now with me, I feel like, you know, um, and, I, and I feel like I often make it count. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like I'm like if I get too many, if I write too much, then I just get a little like all over the place. Like I don't know what to and, so, and, you know, there are songs that I can't even remember. I, I don't, like, I'll be, like, even on this record, I'll be like, ah, shit, I wanted that <laughs> song on this record, and it's not, I don't have any room. I'm not, it's not going to make it. Like, a song I wrote, um, God, like, you know, like, in, like, last summer, mm -hmm. you know, like, who knows when that's coming. You know? I was going to say, like, what do you do with those songs? Do you, like, hold them? Um, I hold them, you know, and then every once in a while, like, you know, somebody else will, like, want it, and depending on how much I want it, I'll be like, yeah. I thought you were going to say, depending on how much they're going to pay for it. Uh, yeah, no, it was, you know, depending on how big they are, how much they want to pay, you know, I don't know. I mean, I know when something is like, I, I have to do it myself, you know, or I want to do it myself. It mean, you know, means a lot to me, or I feel like it's important to my, you know, body of work. Whatever. Has that, have you tuned into that because of all this experience that, you, that you've had? And have, yeah. have you ever given someone a song that you were like, Damn it! I should have kept that no, one. No, no. I, I get asked that often, and and I and I just have one example of a song that I wish I didn't take. I didn't want to take it. I had a song. I, I've told the story many times, but um, I had a song that uh, Shakira and her people wanted, and I and I really wanted to give it to her. Oh, I wanted to give it to Shakira. Oh yeah, I'm sure you <laughs> wanted to give it to Shakira. <laughs> I, I did. I did. I wanted. I wanted to give her that song. And uh, but yeah, I. Uh, and then my, ma my manager at the last minute, he's here. He's forever on my shit list about that, but no. <laughs> but he, um, he was, I think he got nervous in the label meeting, like kind of like, you know, are, do we have the, you know, the one that they're like dying to put out as a first single? And, um, and then he just like kind of, uh, he th put that on them. He played it for them and they were all like, what is this? Right. What the hell is this? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it just like, here come the bullshit wheels, you know, like yeah, kicking into yeah. motion. And then they took it from her, and that, and the, and she really wanted it. So like, uh, you know, her, her people and her, uh, you know, I wasn't on the phone with her. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, she came. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> don't be mad. Um, but yeah, I'll leave this guy. What's up, man? What's, What's up, man? man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that banjo. We're live here. <laughs> 
Fishbowl, <laughs> Fish Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. a lot of people coming in and out. And it's anyway, cool. so I didn't take it, but I always felt like she would have like, if we could, it's called Night Like This, and it was like, it's on my record forever for now. And when I sing it, it's like super sweet and like a lullaby-ish kind of thing. And, and you know, and then I, I remember I heard a, a woman sing it more from like this like more a very feminine perspective and like almost like a, but a, uh, I don't want to say sexy because I don't want to bring that into it, but yeah. it was kind of more like a romantic thing, and I was just like, oh, shit. Oh, man. That would have been good. <laughs> so that's the only time I ever had a song where I, like, you know, where I was like, and not even, you know, just the money of, like, Shakira singing it, <laughs> which it, I'm sure would be good. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just also just for me, you know, it's just like as an artist, I want to hear, like, the best version of a song, and that's why, you know, I kind of make that call when I, I'm like, I think I might do the best version of something, but and this person will do the best version. So how do you know that a song is ready? How do you know that a song is good? I mean, I know you can't predict if it's going to be a hit. That's not the yeah. question. The question is, what makes a song good? Um, that I can't stop listening to it. You know, like when I get a demo, like sometimes I'll have a demo, like a voice memo demo. Like I'll just take it off the board. A lot of times I do that. And... Uh, if I listen to it like 10 times in the car on the way home, I'm like, hmm, this has got some potential. Like, right. I can't like, you know, people, I, 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 you know, I write duds too, everybody does. You know, someone will send me a song and I'll be like, yep, never gonna listen to that again. <laughs> Click, <laughs> bye. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't need to ever listen to like certain songs again, so right. whatever, you know. So LP are your initials. Why and when did you choose to go by LP? Um, Back in the day in New York City, I did. Um, I was at. A, I was working at a restaurant, um, and uh, or a bar, or whatever. And uh, were you a waitress? Uh, I was a bartender. Okay. And and a waiter, I was a cocktail a waiter, waitress a waiter, in New yeah, York, so a I get it. And a bartender. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and there was another Laura that had been working there for uh, a while. So um, and I remember I had a friend when I at summer camp when I was a kid that called me LP, and it always kind of made me go like, yeah, maybe like, I don't know. It resonated with me, but I didn't, you know, I didn't. I didn't really know that you could just change your name. I mean, that would have saved me some, some fucking time, to be honest. <laughs> but like, I, uh, but I think that it just, you know, and it and it pissed, you know, even my my um, girlfriend at the time was not so happy about like, like, because it started to progress, and then everybody was calling me LP, and then she would call me Laura in front of them, and, and they would be like, and then they'd try to call me Laura or something like that, and I'd be like, yo. No. You're like, I don't know who you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. I I'm I LP. People. I didn't think that like it was gonna get um, to a point. Like I didn't I didn't name myself different. It, it was just on a lark. And then my band started calling me that at the time and I just like it felt just kept feeling good. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't realize that I was like abandoning my, you know, birth name. But th now it doesn't even feel like my name. And so when people call people I think try to call it me that as a as a measure of like being more intimate or being more like, you know, like respect or something like that. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not my name. Right, right. Yeah. That's not my name. <laughs> that, that's, that's not, not my name. name. <laughs> so exactly. when you hear songs like Good Good With You, um, that was 2006, right? Good With You? Yeah. Um, that came out actually 2008. 2008. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When you hear songs like that and then you hear <laughs> songs like How Low Can You Go, which is your new single, what's the biggest difference? Where do you think you've evolved the most? Um, well, you know, the thing is, what happened is, is that when I get into these places, the, when I got into these big major label deals, I was like, uh, I was trying to, you know, in my like younger head, do not do what they said, but play the game. Right. You know what I mean? Trying yeah. to get through with myself as much intact as possible. And you know, and I, I like, you know, and it's not a story. I don't like talk a good story like about being myself and swaggering into the label. You know, like. Hey, <laughs> Oh yeah, you don't like it? Well, fuck you. You know, I, I mean, I'm like that now. But like in the beginning, you know, like guys are giving you all this money, and um, and you're trying to like you're, you know, when you get signed, everybody everybody says, and um, you know, rightly so, that's the beginning. Then you're like in this like foot race with every single person that's like trying to get to be a priority at this label. You keep so, having to prove yourself. Yeah. Oh, in every way. I mean, even now, I like you know, like. Um, it's it's great, you know. I mean, I think that that's what makes you ultimately a better um, human and a better artist is to like continually, uh, you know, try to improve yourself and 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 improve and prove yourself. Right, right. And so I just think that um, 
you know, I, I allowed, I didn't allow it, but I also just was like kind of getting all this knowledge. I started writing songs and at such a like uh, fast level to go back to the writing a lot, you know, because when you're on a major, like as a solo artist, they just start putting you with all, and, you, and you're a vocal person, you know, you have a certain like level of voice that they're like, we gotta get the song for the voice, you know? And so you just write with all these people and it's very, um, you know, uh, you're like, wow, I gotta write, you know? So, and and they, they're trying to find a sound, right. you know? And I had all these sounds. That's the biggest thing that I think is like, what people like about me now is that I, I have a bunch of elements that are, you know, easy to see and also a little more like kind of where did how you know like like when someone comes to see my show I think I'm like you know kind of a rock artist mm -hmm. really even though I seem pop or alternative to people I don't know what the hell they think you know what I mean <laughs> but I, I'm just but I'm unapologetically like you know yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like I'm kind of just doing whatever I feel so, um, but that, but writing, but all that craziness and all the labels and then writing for other people really kind of just like made me kind of like get better at, or not even, uh, yes, get better, but like really have all this like kind of like uh, range, I think. And confidence too, right? Because yeah. I mean, we see LP and we see someone that's super confident. Mm -hmm. You know, we see like swagger, we see, I, I'm just like, I, I want to be like that, you know. Yeah. We want to be that confident. Have well, you, you can. Always you can like be that? like that, and then you'd be like screaming inside. I, I I've always right, been outwardly. That's true. That's true. I've been outwardly like that, yeah, for a very long time. For, you know, I mean, all my life, like people are always trying to beat it out of me, like kind of like, who the hell do you think you are? I'm like, I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> I don't really care. You know, like, you know, like walk around like you own the place until you own the place. I wonder if it's a New York thing too. I guess so. I just I think it's like I think it's like my dad was like like a super maniac, uh, tough guy. And I think that like, I felt very protected. I'd be like, oh yeah, fuck you. Right. Like behind his back, like, yeah. what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? <laughs> right, know? right. And he'd be like, right. <laughs> and uh, I just feel like I feel uh, pretty, pretty um, protected. And I don't know, I feel like I could talk myself out of kind of anything if I had to. Talking about your dad, you've mentioned before that your dad, um, he wasn't that keen on you pursuing an artistic <laughs> yeah. career. Yeah. Uh, would you, you know, he's passed now, but would you want him to know how successful you are now? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, I think he, you know, the thing, as it went on, like he knew, like even like, I don't know, he had a friend that was like, you know, in the entertainment business that was like, oh no, you know, she, she's, ha she's got something, you know, right. like, and, and he respected this person uh, and was like, I don't know, and he and he always felt something. I think he was a very sentimental kind of guy. You know, like he was toned up, couldn't sing a note or anything or do any music, but you know, he was like that guy who would play a song over and over and over and over and over and over again. So um, I think he was like kind of touched that I could sing. It's like if your kid's, you know, good at anything, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, um, so he, he got it. And I think, you know, when I started getting, he was, he died like right after like my first uh, big record deal, and I, I you know, I, I kind of, you know, I, I feel like he was like, oh shit, <laughs> right, you yeah. know. Uh, but I mean, I think a lot of people uh, were like kind of like, because no one, everybody wants results. It's like even like you know, family. I don't think like extended family um, really kind of it sank in until I did like David Letterman or something like that. Right, like, you know, like. You know, like you you go like, well, you know, I may not be giant or anything yet or whatever, you know, um, but I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy. So yeah, you know, it's just like a, it's a journey, and and that's why like you know, humility and being humble is just like you know, that's the that's the way because it's like confidence is different than arrogance and and a hundred percent. So I think that you know, it's always there's always someone bigger, better. You know, and, and it should be like that. It's nice. Right, of know? course. It's like like uh, competition is always good, too. You know, it yeah. pushes you. And I think everybody has a place, you know. Like when I was um, uh, really young, I was in Amsterdam and I was like stoned out of my mind on Space Cake. And I remember just see, like watching MTV and being like in like a, in a, in a, in a cafe all alone. I was like, because was, I was just starting to be like, eh, I want to maybe do music. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I can't do that. Look at these people. <laughs> so you were stopping yourself? Yeah. You're probably like watching like Britney oh Spears God. or something. Like, and you're yeah, like, what? I was like, you With know. With a snake? Yeah, and then now, you know, if I walk into like, um, you know, I, I mean, 
I'll be like in somewhere in Europe and go into like you know some MTV office and I'll, I'll be like I'll see my video like before or after a you know a Justin Bieber video or something and be like holy crap that's odd you that's, know? yeah those are the <laughs> pinch me moments right <laughs> yeah I was like it's weird well you deserve it I mean you're yeah, so freaking oh, it's true <laughs> but you know talking about that I who deserves it you know at the end of the day too because there's so many amazing talented yeah, people exactly. out there yeah I mean you know make your head spin like. You know, that was also, but I would tell you, and I tell this story always, like, to inspire other people, you know, but I've worked with so many um, people as a writer, like, when I was just writing for other people, and I had no end in sight. There was no, like, oh, I'm going to be an artist again, it's truly, from 2009 to 2011, there was no... Um, Which, for me, is, like, mind-blowing. I'm like, for a minute there, you were just going to not sing and just be a songwriter yeah. and never sing again. Yeah, and I, I, was, I sing the demos, you know? I was like, yeah, that's cool. That would have been so bad and, uh, for, like, humanity uh, in general. <laughs> you would have deprived uh, of Well, that's us, nice. Of so I, I appreciate that. But, like, I think that I, I was very, um, you know, I, I felt like I was, um, that was some immersive learning because there's this, this great, um, I think there's great value in, um, you know, being void of expectations, you know, it's yeah. like one of the things I've definitely learned in my life, like, don't put expectations on anything, and I felt very, like, you know, um, kind of like in, like, in a survival mode, but in creative survival mode, you know, and I think that um, it was interesting what happened to my writing and all that in that place, but what I was talking about is, like, um, like working with all these artists and seeing careers either go or falter and for no reason like you know you'd have some like young woman or young man come in they're like you know 20 years old they can sing like unbelievable they've got you know they had one song that did kind of well or or they or they haven't but they're like on a fast track all the a and r guys are like there's a priority there's a priority i don't believe like you know and and you would bet your whole life that this person would just become a star. Yeah, and I will tell you that, unfortunately, maybe 98% of the time, I never heard of that person again once I was done working with them or whatever, yeah. you know? Um, and um, that's tough, you know? I mean, and I wasn't the only person. It wasn't like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, because you didn't write them a good song. Sorry about that. <laughs> but, but I mean, every, everybody in the industry was working with this, this person. Right, you know? right, and right. I think for sure. So they had all the machinery yeah. behind them, like, pushing them. Yeah, and that's another thing that really gave me, like, the consonant confidence to, like, keep going. Because I was like, no one, you know, like, and I, I do remember, like, even, like, I forgot to say that in that, in that cafe in Amsterdam when I was <laughs> out of my mind <laughs> watching MTV, doubting myself. I just felt this, like, voice kind of going, like, Everybody's career is different. Mm, you know, everybody like, has their own path. Everybody has their own path, and and you're no different. Like, just do your own path. Like, right. I mean, you know, you it'd be very difficult to duplicate my path uh, <laughs> for yes. someone to be yes. like, well, what did you do? It's like, yeah, <laughs> you don't want to. <laughs> I mean, you, yeah, you got dropped so many times. Don't <laughs> get into it. Like, you know, like let's, let's skip not that part. Go there. You know, yeah. Lost on You was only about three years ago, right? That I came out. Uh, Four. Four years ago, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, but you had had such a huge career before that that nobody, <laughs> not that nobody had ever Well, I had like of, an indie thing, you know Yeah, I mean? I mean, like, I remember watching yeah. you here in Bordeaux yeah. at school nights, yeah. like eight or seven years right. ago, and being like, who the fuck is this girl? <laughs> oh, well, that was my right, lord. That was right in my writing mode. That was, you know, that that night changed my, my path, I think, because, you know. Because I, I was there? Because you were there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, that was a big thing about it. <laughs> and I, I was like, I was doing it for fun, you know? And, and every time I started having fun, um, people were like, oh, what are you, what are, what are you doing? Mm. <laughs> you know? And uh, so I was just, I went there, you know, I would go there just to, my friend recommended that I sing there. And, I, and then when I started singing there, the guy who ran the show, Jason Scopa, uh, was just like, yo, you got to do it again and again. And then people started coming to see me and they were like, they were kind of like, oh, you came out of nowhere. I was like, you know, I had already been touring for years and years, right. and I knew how to, like, perform, you know. But um, it really got me back in the swing of wanting to perform um, and and loving it and sharing it, you know. Mm -hmm. I felt like and people, like, started to come and come and come, and it was like, and it, and it kind of was a perfect storm. I had a, I'd gotten a Rihanna single. Um, right. My song got picked 
into the wild. I paid for this big Citibank commercial. And then, you know, and uh, Warner Brothers was like courting me and some other, you know, and then, and then at the end of 2011, um, I just got signed. That, that song came out and I had like a burst, you know. And then, you know, unfortunately there were some extenuating circumstances at the label afterwards that then kind of like dismantled what I... Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, you play Lost on You for this, oh, yeah. the new team, and they're like, yeah, three, ah, we three pass years on later, that. Yeah, three years later, after they completely botched my, the single release of Into the Wild that had, like, a huge, like, moment on a commercial, which is, like, what they always ask for, you know, and then, then it took too long to put the record out, and then everybody that loved me was either fired or left. Gone. And then I, and then the new people who just didn't get me, like, and, you know, that's the thing, that's the thing with, uh, being an artist, like, and whether, you know, I could, I could read up on myself and be like, oh, well, I don't look like this or that. But, you know, people either like, but I had people that many times that were like, yo, that's just weird enough in my work. <laughs> but no, I mean, seriously, like, I had people that were like, holy crap, you know, this person has something. And then, and then when you're in front of someone that, do, that does not think you have something, it's right. like going on a bad date. <laughs> you're like, like a really, really bad date. You're like, this person does not want to fuck me. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. It's like, Check please, <laughs> you know, like kind of that mo that moment. And so um, I get in there and I play them. You know, my fans will appreciate this. They've heard this story a thousand times. But uh, I play them Lost in You. I play them Muddy Waters, and I play them Strange. And they're like, uh, Is no. this over yet? Yeah. Um, those are fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Did you know right away when you stepped out of that room that it wasn't uh, happening? I don't know. You know, I didn't like. I hated that guy so much. Yeah. You know, he's such a, like, you know, just a, you know, I just, I just, because I look at some of these people and I go, why are you here? Right. You were like, you, what, you, you drummed for Sheryl Crow for 10 years? Oh, congratulations. <laughs> now you're an expert in music. Get the fuck out right, of here. Right, like, right, Like, you know, like, I just, like, don't, I don't respect them. Like, so, like, whatever. Like, you know, like, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, people. Oh, thank you. They know, oh, I love you, too. Thanks. <laughs> Well, How people, cool is that? Yeah, there you go. Some fans out here. But people who do respect you are the ones that are watching us here on the live stream. We encourage you guys to ask any questions for LP. I do have my friend Sarah here writing down some of the questions. So let us know where you're tuning in from. You're watching Fun for Life Radio on Dash. I'm Peely, and here is LP with me. LP, something that blows my mind, and actually, I don't know if you know who Sebastian Chris is. He's an amazing producer. He's won like 12 Grammys. He's worked with... Shakira, oh, no. Ricky Martin, Luis Fonsi. <laughs> but, word, would you? <laughs> but he's he's seen you play a bunch of times, and he he called me and he's like, oh my god, you're interviewing LP. She's such an amazing talent, and I'm like, uh, can you believe that she's never been nominated to a Grammy? Uh, you know. I mean, he's like, <laughs> we gotta talk about this. This needs to change like right away. Like, are you listening? God, are you listening? <laughs> <laughs> Is that something that you think oh, about? Um, no. I try not to think about that. <laughs> but, but you wish God would listen. You know, listen, I mean, it's wonderful to be um, recognized mm -hmm. by, you know, your, your country. Your colleagues. Your country at all, <laughs> basically. But, uh, by, yeah, by people. I think, you know, I'm, I think I'll always stick to this thing. Like, even, you know, even now, I'll, you know, people don't have no idea. There's, you know, there's many places where many people know, of course. So I, and I'm like, I'm always kind of like, wow, I'm I'm so lucky, it's so, so like cool. But like people won't know, and then they'll then they'll look you up, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, they'll be like, holy <laughs> and, shit. Um, I think that's always the subtle thing that I like. You know, I like uh, like if I, you know, um, I always like to think like, who would you want to be if you could be Mick Jagger or um or <laughs> this guy? This is awesome. Hello. Hey. <laughs> um, um, who who would you be if you could be like Mick Jagger or Keith Richards? You know, and not that Keith Richards is not as famous you know but i i still think he's always it was like yeah you know, yeah he has a better yeah he just was like chill and, and i love mick jagger i mean i i love them equally now but but i always would like want to be like the kind of cool like chill side guy plus you, know you can keep some of your privacy in the u.s you know yeah, you can go exactly. to like a store next door and yeah. no one's gonna be like ah! yeah you know i mean i think it's like i i truly have a beautiful Beautiful, beautiful career. I have beautiful fans. Um, I have such, uh, um, you know, I have the exact level that you know I love, and I'm always, you know, I always say I can, I can handle this. I can handle more. I'm like good, you know. Right. I'm like, and uh, and I'm no matter what, it's like less, whatever. I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna put out songs, put out songs, put out songs. Yay. And and uh, that's my plan. I don't, you know, it's like, again, the no expectations things. Like you, you, you can screw yourself over with, uh, you know, too much. 
um, of that kind of ambition. But it's it, you know, but it's good to keep a little to keep that drive and to keep you know the um, des the desire to create, and that's mm -hmm. um, something I hope I never lose. A hundred percent. Well, talking about songs yeah. on my show, Truth and Tunes, here on Fun for Life Radio on Dash. Um, the, the real concept is for amazing cultural influencers such as, as yourself to come in and share yeah. those five songs that have <laughs> influenced and shaped yeah. their lives in some form. Yeah. Um, so let's start it's with those hard, songs. It's a really hard question. I was going to ask I you, went, yeah. I went super classic on it, you know, but I can name like, you know, current songs and stuff like that. But I feel like, and, and also I didn't even, you know, this was one of those things that like, you know, Talaya was just like, you have to answer these questions, you have to answer these questions, you have to pick these five songs, pick these five songs. Pick them, pick I know, them, I keep them. emailing your team, just, I'm like, guys, I, I need like, those yo. five songs. I was <laughs> like, I just go on Spotify, okay, I love David Boy, bam, you know, like, I mean, there's so many, there's yep. so many songs, um, you know, uh, but anyway, carry on. All right, no, Name but it, that song. it's 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 funny because out of all the guests that I've had, only one, which was Rudy Sarso, he's a bass player for uh -huh. Quiet Riot and oh, nice. White Snake and Ozzy <laughs> Osbourne. He was like, "Oh no, this was super easy for me to pick these five songs." I'm like, "You're the only guest that I've ever I mean, had think, that has said that I this wasn't a challenge." A lot of artists are like that. I'm always like, "It's like, who are your influences?" I'm like, "Oh god," <laughs> my mind goes totally fucking. Like, I'm just like, "Yeah." <laughs> All right, well, let's start with a huge influence for a lot of people. Okay. Um, and it's David Bowie. Yeah. And it's Suffragette City. Suffragette City. <laughs> I, you know, I'm honestly, I could have gone changes. I could have yeah. gone, you know, um, all, all kinds of things, you know. But I feel like um, Suffragette City is just like so, like, um, it's just a rock. I'm, like I said, I'm like kind of a rocker yep. kind of person. And, uh, you know, and it's got that, oh, uh, wow. Like, I don't know, he's just always, it's just like, his writing is so crazy. It's like the way he like can just make something that's never been heard before a hook, like, uh, uh, not, not not something that's never been heard before, but uh, like, he can like, he melds genres, speaking of that, very, very interestingly. And, um, you know, and he's one of my idols for sure, because, you know, speaking of like a body of work, he's one of those people that I feel like, uh, you know, um, was putting out incredible stuff until the last breath. Yeah, like yep. that last record he put out was as good as, and you know any of his early shit. And um, I just was like floored, you know. And it was really and and it and it wasn't trying to be his early shit, you know. It was like it was just very, um, you know, it was um, kind of just right in his real kind of lane, you know, that he that he's always done, you know, and, and right up until the very end and. And that's like so um, inspiring to me. Plus his style, you know, and obviously you have an amazing yeah. style too. And he, you know, he play, played around with being androgynous too. He wasn't afraid of doing that. Yeah, I, long time ago, like I, I, I was working at a bar and a friend of mine was like, yo, do you, uh, I'm like, she was an artist. She was a customer at the thing. And I, and, um, I think she was actually a, someone that introduced me to like one of my first voice teachers or something. And she'd had, um, she had had some success and stuff and she was opening for him. Um, what? Yeah, in this park thing. It was like this kind of chill, like, uh, uh, park in Manhattan that was like having this small show. Like, sometimes things like that just happen. They're just like, kind of like, you know, like they're unannounced. People don't know and whatever. So she played, and then I got to see David Bowie. <laughs> and I never saw I'm him. so jealous. And I was like, and he was just, you know, in a simple, like, you know, I always like kind of like this look at him, and I, you know, I kind of try to emulate that, you know, at times, but just like a simple silk shirt and, and, you know, trousers, whatever. And, and this fucking guy like flipped between like being a man and a woman, like every five minutes, like five seconds, you know, at times. And it was so, so precise. Like I was like, he looked like some beautiful, like, um, you know, elegant woman. And once then he'd be like this kind of like, you know, skinny swaggering rock star all of a sudden I was just like, it was blowing my mind. Oh, that's awesome. Have you seen yeah. that video? Do you know who Stromae is from France? Who? Stromae. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. He yeah. has an amazing video where he goes from male to female. Yeah. You should check it out. It's I it's, will. it's It's pretty amazing. Why not? All right, so um, let's let's hear a minute of Suffra Su Suffragette. Suffragette City. There you go, Suffragette. Suff Suffra. Yeah, so you guys, as you know, or you may not know, but now you're learning, I'm ESL. <laughs> English as a second language right here. So well, I that's met... a hard one because it's like, <laughs> there's no word that's suffer. There's like s suffer, which you know, that's right. why he's trying to say it like that. But it's like, 
Like, but I, I don't know if it's a fictitious place or a real place, unfortunately. And if it's fictitious, then I'm like, what a great word to make up. Right. Suffragette. I mean, that's a, you know, that's, you, you can like spend a whole like book on why he would choose that. Well, thank you for teaching me how to pronounce it. Oh, hell yeah. I appreciate that, LP. My pleasure. All right. Well, here you go, guys. Enjoy a minute of suffragette, <laughs> suffragette city. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite color? Yeah. Like, what's your, like who what? What's your favorite color? Oh, uh, what's your favorite color? <laughs> yeah. Is it more difficult to uh, write songs or uh, like for other people than for yourself? That is like that yeah, is that's a song in that you every single get. interview I've ever I've ever done. Well, not this one. I haven't asked that one. I know. I love Yay. it. Yay! So so <laughs> Winning at the interview. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. Hey, and hey, we're back. We're back. All right. So <laughs> that was Suffragette City. Bye. And don't forget, Suffragette. Yes. Is the is the the movement like the the suffragettes were the first, the women that like fought for the right to vote for women? Sorry, I forgot about that. And uh, oh, I should history be lesson. Shocked. I should like my my history teacher would uh, you know be, should be shot. She'd be like LP. I and actually you that. she would you know I I want to tell this devilish story. Please like, do. Was, we love was, devilish stories. I was working at a, a lesbian bar and um, she came in and she never liked me. <gasps> like she did not like me probably because oh, she so was good. like this kid's on to me. Because she was like, I was like, my husband, my kids, and I'm, I'm fine with it. But I was just like, you know, like, tch, right. So anyway, so one day she comes in the bar and she goes, and she was like, you know, she was like kind of a badass, but she was like, you know, I'm a scout just sir. I'm like, sure. And I, I literally went like this. I was like, I was like, I know who you are. <laughs> How creepy, right? Wait, and I'm like, and she's hi, like, Mrs. Smith. And then she just looks at me like, and I was like, I was in a, I was in your social studies class in school, and she goes, Nah, you must have, must have been smart because it was a, it was like an AP class right, or whatever. Right. And I swear to God, I like turned around to like answer the phone or something like that, and I, I turn back and she's gone. <laughs> she's like disappeared. Was like, <laughs> like the door was like spinning, you know. And I'm like, sorry. I love that. Yeah. Karma, anyway. huh? I mean, I don't know. She was just always kind of like, kind of like, Eric Lacey. Eh. You know, I was like, why does this fucking chick hate me? You know? Right. I was like, I just like digging up old stuff for you. What a great story, though. Yeah, I would have been like, here you go, Professor <laughs> Smith or whatever. <laughs> I know you. I know you, and I know the truth. Yeah. How's your husband doing? <laughs> How the kids? How's the husband? Right. How's the side piece? Uh, the girlfriend? Ah. <laughs> oh. All right, before we go to the second song that you chose for Truth and Tunes, we're going to answer some questions for the audience. All right, we have a good one from Brogan Scott from the UK. He's watching on YouTube, and he's saying, I mean, I actually don't know if, oh, it's a she. I was going to say, I don't know if Brogan is a, probably a girl. Okay, so hi, Brogan. Is it, <laughs> <laughs> is that a, I mean, I, I'm going to ask if that's a real name. What a dick. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, broken. Yeah, broken. Yes. What do you got? Is it difficult to draw on negative emotions in music when it comes to the reactions of family or friends who may take it personally? What, in my own music, you think? Is that what you mean? Okay. Yes. Um, you know, I can't, um, honestly, what I write, what I say, what I uh, perform or do in a video or whatever is um, my creative um, right, and I don't care what anybody thinks or says about it. Love you, love you, uncle. Blah blah blah. Whatever you know. No, no they don't. And all your exes. No, they. You know, I mean, dude, I'm so far gone with my family. They're just like, mm. uh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, yeah, I, they don't care. I get you. I totally get you. Yeah. I I lost both of my parents this year, and like my sisters kind of like pushed me aside too. And I'm like, I love them, but yeah. I'm like, I feel so free. Yeah, man. You know, there's I a don't, freedom to you it. Can't you can't know? allow that. You can't allow it. You know, and uh. That's the thing, you know. You gotta be like freedom for right. yourself at all times, you know. And enjoy it. All right. The next song that you chose for Truth and Tunes is such a classic, such an amazing <sighs> long song. But unfortunately, we're only gonna play one minute of it. Um, it's from Queen from their 1975 <laughs> album, yeah. A Night at the Opera, which actually is interesting because your mom studied opera, right? She did. I mean, that's that's the the whole thing of this song is that she played a lot of opera in the house, and I. And I would hear that, you know, and um, but I loved like, you know, I loved hearing pop music too, even though it was like only on, you know, radio stuff. But I, I remember I was uh, I was like after soccer practice or something like that, and I was in like 
my friend's pool, <laughs> like kind of like, you know, just living my life. <laughs> and uh, and I heard that song kind of like piping outside. They were playing records or whatever. And, and you're like, what like, is Yo. this? <laughs> What the fuck? Is yeah, that? like, and I just because I couldn't like, my I couldn't wrap my head around the like rock format with the like kind of soaring kind of more like uh, vocal, and also just the I mean you know the arrangement of that song is ridiculous. Right. So I just you know I was very like kind of like I didn't know what was happening. You know there was so many different parts to that song and and so um you know it's always inspiring. It's like that you know like kind of like uh you know Stairway to Heaven those songs yeah. that you're just like. How did anyone get that shit through? Right. Which is, you know, even more fascinating now. But um, the story behind it, and just also just the song in general, it's just like a masterpiece. Yeah, we're talking about Bohemian Rhapsody, and I don't know if you know this, but in an interview during the band's Australian tour in '85, Freddie said it was basically three songs that I wanted to put out, and yeah. I just put the three together. Yeah. Has that I happened mean, to you? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I've only done it with like two songs, putting them together. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure, I don't, I don't quite remember if any, any of that, uh, I, I must have put on a record, but I can't remember what song that is. It's, I think it's sometimes more, it's just like, not, they're not necessarily songs, they're just ideas, like I'll be at a session and we'll be like, you know, um, just making up all this crap. <laughs> right. And they'll be like, oh, what if you like link these together, you know, and uh, I mean, that song sounds like that, but the way it moves, it's like a, you know, a three act play, so it's perfect. All right, well, here you go, guys. You get to hear a minute of Bohemian Rhapsody well, by right. Queen. I see a little off a bar. Don't forget, Scalabouche. How do you say Scalabouche? <laughs> Come on, Pilly. Scalabouche, Scalabouche. Scalabouche, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I did it right. it. And of course, we're off the air when that yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> we're on Instagram. Yeah, I think so. I mean, what am I leaving for? What do I got? I don't know. We have three more songs in her video. Are you going to? All right. And we're back. Yes, we we hear that um, Brogan was excited. Brogan, Brogan from Ireland was. Oh, like, Brogan, Brogan from Ireland was ah, all excited. Go, that you, that I thought you were saying broken. That's why I was like, no, no, no. I was like, nothing's broken yet. That's so, so sad. So, so fast. So fast. Yeah. All right, we have another question. This one's from Leila from España, la Leila. madre patria. Oh. You got me on money. Layla, what is That's your next tattoo, Miss LP? Oh my goodness! Well, you know, I don't know. I have a lot of ideas. I mean, you know, I've had a lot of time alone to think about this. Like, you know, all, all these months, I don't know. I have like, I have several ideas. Um, um, I don't know. You don't know. I like, okay, I like to That's a fair question. That's a fair answer. Um, something that's like sailor-ish, you know, like the normal, my normal sailor vibe. You know, I'm like, like they always mean. We, we hadn't like, noticed that you like the sailing vibes at all. <laughs> What gives it away? <laughs> it, 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 you know, put that imagery in the <laughs> emoji there. I don't know. But yeah, so it's be something like that. Something, something nautical. Something classic, something probably nautical. Something nautical. Ooh. Oh, that, shoot. Ooh, that was a good naughty oh. call. I like that. <laughs> Talking about time in your hands, what, what have you been doing during COVID? I mean, you've been working a lot. You, you know, uh, you released the live album, Live in Moscow, yeah. a couple of singles, videos. Yeah. I mean, you've stayed pretty I, busy, right? You know, I work. Like, I work on songs. Like, I mean, I, you know, I've been like, um, I work on songs, I work out, I do yoga, I like, do the Peloton bike, you know, I drink a shit ton of wine. Yep, yep. Um, you know. Join the I, club. Yay! Yes. <laughs> wine, I was united. I mean, I don't know, you know, like, it depends. And then you get like, so like, sick of that whole thing, but. Um, but a little bit is nice. Yeah, but um, you spend time with I your loved walks. ones yeah, and, you know, and your Laura doggy. Laura and I cook dinner and stuff like that. You know, um, I, I I wish I could say I've become a good cook. She's become a great cook. I'm just like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. In my belly. I please. mean, I miss going like out to restaurants. That's my biggest like thing. That's like my probably my main. You know, my like most people, I guess, or not. Honestly, not most selfish people. My main two extravagances is like meals and clothes, you know, so I like that, uh, you know, I miss that part, you know, um, kind of like just going out to restaurants. Yeah, and I'm sure you miss like yeah. people 
in uh, your concerts, right? Oh it's, God, I mean that's because you, you had to drive in concert and like was that <laughs> weird? Just having like beep beep beep. I know. Beep, it's just, I mean, you know, cars next to each other. It's just like I mean, I just was like, you know, it's like it's a lot to wrap your head around. To be honest, you're just yeah. like, hey, you know, pointing at cars. <laughs> What's up? Yes. Subaru, that's you. <laughs> Su. Su. Yeah, it's weird. Okay, well, hopefully that'll change soon. Yeah. We hope. You know, I, I miss going to clubs and like touching sweaty bodies. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. Sweaty bodies. I, I mean, I like, I like looking at the sweaty bodies. There you go. Not, not necessarily touching no, them. No, I get in there. No, I like, I don't mind touching them. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's I always go down there as much as I can, you know? Um, but it's, uh, but yeah, I, I miss like, like it's hard to believe like, you know, I, I just have so many like snapshots in my brain of like looking at these crowds, you know, and being like, wow, I can't believe how close like people are standing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right now, like I would be like, oh God, okay. <laughs> You're gonna have a panic attack. Are you a little claustrophobic? Uh, or? no, but you know, I'm actually good like with that. I, I can deal with it. But um, I feel like I, yeah, it's a, it could be a little much, especially, well, you know, I, I really want to go and uh, be able to go, go, like, grab a beer. Like, I look at these people, and I'm like, yo, yo, you are locked in that shit for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was this one club in, uh, God, in, in Canada. In, uh, it might have been Montreal or something like that, but I remember there was this super tall dude, and he's just cutting through all, you know, like, my crowd is, like, you know, uh, predominantly women, I guess. Um, <laughs> like, 70, 30, maybe, <laughs> maybe more. But maybe um, 80, 20. But he's just like, and he was tall for a man too. He was, must have been like six six, and it was just like. But I was like, yes, that's this is the crowd I'd be in. I'd be like, yo, giant man, <laughs> over here, over here with the beers, bring the beers, bring the beers. All right. Unfortunately, we are not having any beers right now. But maybe after. Yeah. Let's know. go to the third song that you chose, and it's by the Queen. I mean, Queen of Soul, pretty much. Queen of Soul, yeah. Yeah, American singer, yeah. songwriter, activist, a little bit of everything, yeah. Aretha Franklin. And this is Spirit in the Dark. Yeah. Um, it was released in 1970. Why this song? Well, I mean, she has Just oh, because, like, songs. Aretha, like, you know, even though I don't usually state a lot of times, like, the musically, like, as many women as men, I, you know, I kind of forget sometimes. But it's like, I think it's like, um, I don't know what it is, but, uh, but there's so many, you know. Aretha Franklin... Aretha Franklin, Shaka Khan, and Joni Mitchell were like like three of my go-tos. Pat Benatar, that I really kind of like taught me how to s use my voice. Like mm. I tried to like you know grab all those different you know like and these are just like this quintessential singers to me like of different you know genres. Like like Joni Mitchell taught me all that high stuff and just singing along with them. But Aretha, you know Aretha for me like really kind of showed me that like kind of wail that I was able to do. You know. And Spirit in the Dark, I mean, there's so many. There's like a greatest hits record that's not on Spotify that I had that I loved. And uh, I mean, I can't not sing that song. I am getting the spirit. You know, like I'm just like, what? I, I can't stop myself mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. singing it. Like a lot of those like classic joints, I just can't not sing. So. Well, Sarah and I were talking about you doing a collaboration with Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks. <laughs> See, I my accent came well, there out, you like, go. There's Stevie another Nicks. one. I can like, you know, I mean, I can kind of do like a, a little Stevie kind of mm -hmm. like vibe. And, and it'll be in some of my songs that people, like I had a song, Dreamcatcher, on my last mm -hmm. record. You know, I was just like trying to channel some Stevie Nicks, you know, without dead on trying to sound like I was ripping her off. Right. But, you know, I, I mean, she's in incredible. But Stevie, if you're out there, you're by any chance <laughs> looking at this live stream, come yeah, on. Yeah, Stevie, Stevie's watching this live stream. Come <laughs> For on. sure. I mean, what has she got to For do? For sure, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's throw it to um, Aretha Franklin, and here is Spirit in the Dark. I got a tribute to him, and they asked me to sing um, This Land is Your Land, and um, I did. Okay. And, um, yep. Oh, we're back. Are we back? I th we're, yes. <laughs> All right, yes, we? there's okay. Daniel's arm. All right. Yep, we're back. <laughs> this is live stream, people. It happens. It's all good. Yo, that ain't a perfect science, you know. But anyway, you were you were telling me a little story. Oh, just that I was saying as far as like my proximity to Stevie Nicks. <laughs> so I was uh, I was singing uh, for this uh, um, songwriter Hall of Fame induction, and um, uh, it was like a 
they were going to have like a special award for Woody Guthrie, who's like, you know, an Americana, like the OG, like kind of pre-Bob Dylan or like around Bob Dylan, kind of like Americana, like kind of like, like political, politically charged singer, amazing. And he wrote This Land Is Your Land. And, um, and I was singing a version of it with a band called Take Six, which is like an acapella men's group. And um, I remember I was going on, I had to go on after like Bette Midler and Stevie Nicks were on stage. And I think that like, they were talking about like that movie, that, that old movie that Bette Midler was on in The Rose and Stevie was singing The Rose. I was like, I was backstage freaking out. Like I don't get, I get m mildly nervous, but this was incapacitating nervousness. <laughs> and I was like, you're like, oh, frozen. Oh, yeah, I don't know if I can do it, you know? And, and I, it was just me starting out alone. And speaking of people, I think Aretha Franklin and like Clive Davis were in the audience. Oh and like, God. I mean, I, I almost like, uh, you know, like, like the term shat yourself comes to mind, but it felt like <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm. All right, moving on from shatting yourself to, you know, that was a really real moment. And the next song is So Real by Jeff Buckley. Oh. I mean, so Jeff why, Buckley. Yeah, is, why this song and why Jeff, Jeff? Well, Jeff Buckley, first of all, um, you know, I think the only reason why I can understand, uh, you know, um, like a certain level of fandom is because I feel like I felt like that, you know, even though I didn't do what my beautiful fans do for me, which is, you know, wait in line and all that stuff and, you know, and make create sure teams. You have yeah. so many teams. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't, you know, and, you know, we didn't have that, that kind of thing then yeah. anyway. But, um, you know, I never joined a fan club. I don't know like that kind of thing. But I was such a, I remember I was like surprised at myself when I got his record. And, um, sorry, I'm going to stop playing with that. Uh, when I got his record that was his posthumous record, the record that was um, kind of like put together by his uh, his um, mother and his bandmates, mm -hmm. and it was like the record that um, he didn't do. That was like basically compiled from his demos that he made before his death. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like this very sick feeling about like that this person, like I was never going to hear new music from this person. Right. And, it, and it showed me like the responsibility that you have like once you connect, you know, and, and I felt that a lot when things first started getting really, like, bigger. I'd be, like, on stage and always feeling very, like, kind of, like, grateful and stuff, um, which I attribute to, like, you know, how difficult things were coming up, but I would feel that, but then I had this extra thing that felt like this, um, like, a responsibility toward these people that cared so much about my music and, and me, and so, um, you know, I just think that, like, it really is, like, you know, he was one of my favorites, and he taught me that, I feel like. He, right. taught me, he taught me how much it means to, like, want music from somebody and the loss of it if you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I just think his voice was unbelievable. Like, I loved singing his songs, too. He, you know, he's, he also can, you know, taught me some things, and I, I was just, like, I was just blown away by him. He was, like, almost like one of those, like, he was like a comet, you know? Like, he was too bright and too... Too insane to like and yeah what a tragic loss too but yeah. i was looking at this video so real yesterday and a lot of the comments were like i miss you i miss you we miss oh you. my god i mean he that's the thing i mean i think you know every, you always miss people but like like the fact that he could put out grace at that yeah again a masterpiece of a record in my opinion and then like to never get to hear another thing and and you know i think that he really blasted off everybody like you know all the bands that like kind of became be like 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 bands like Radiohead and stuff like that that like kind of came out of that time and and uh, I feel like he was the leading like you know leading light in that in a way for me. All right, well here you go, guys. This is Jeff Buckley, so real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you your know what the worst is when you go into a session with someone really big, and you're just like, or or not even like they don't even have to be big. They just have to be like kind of like have a big hit. And you can't stop singing their song, and you're like, eh. yeah. <laughs> or, or like, if you're like, you know, they, you literally just looked them up, you know, like someone who's like newer but has had a hit, and you're just like, you were just in your car, like, kind of like trying to figure out who the hell they were. <laughs> I try not to do that usually. I don't even like, I don't even know how big a person he is or whatever. All right. Well, we're going to a question from Chris. Uh, the question is: Is there a lesser-known, undiscovered artist who you? Um, I, 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 you know, and he's not lesser known in my country. It's not really lesser known. I don't know, like, uh, you know, like Rye, I love. And, oh, my God, um, Rye's awesome. Oh, uh, I'm really into this song called Helpless right now. Um, Doesn't he live here? 
Yeah, I guess. Come so. on, let's make that happen, <laughs> right? But um, you know, um, I uh, there's a there's a guy named Tamino, who I'm obsessed with. Um, that I uh, I discovered because I was just like I was like looking on live something somebody else his picture and I was like, oh, he's really cute. Look at that! <laughs> hey! I was like, he's he's uh, he's beautiful. Look at him. And I clicked on it. I was like, I still got it. Yeah. But uh, I can notice a hot man. You know, but yeah. Did you surprise like, yourself? Uh, um, poetic and everything. What's his name again? Just uh, so Tamino. T A M I N O. Tamino. And uh, and you know he was a uh, he was really starting to get up some like kick up some steam like as far as selling out and all this stuff um, as he was. Um, as we were going into lockdown, he's the last so last show I saw oh, wow. before lockdown. I was like, I'm not missing this because I have this bad feeling that if I miss this guy play at this small place, I'm not going to see it again. I was so stoked because it was just him with his guitar on stage and mind blowing, like exactly like you would have thought the record was brand new. Oh, yeah. nice, yeah, nice. It was sick. Well, talking about mind blowing, your last song that you picked that has inspired you in some way is Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, mama. Um, I just think like Led Zeppelin, man, is just the sexiest fucking rock band of all time to me. Like, you know, all I want to do when I'm like listening to Led Zeppelin is get down, get down. And, uh, you know, it's just like good. And I feel like all Led Zeppelin songs kind of like <laughs> take you on a journey. Yeah, I mean, they're just like, uh, it, there's something about it, like, that's just like, uh, you know, again, like, the fact that they can put in these, that, like, these moments that, like, are not pop, but, like, you know, they're popular, like, they're just, like, they're catchy, and, like, and uh, you want to sing them over and over, and, like, it's just, uh, it, it's got, like, this depth, and, again, this darkness, you know, which can bring you to, like, my, my new song, like, you know, I, I do a lot of, like, bright, happy kind of stuff, but, you know, I mean... I got my, I got my thing, you know. Your dark side too. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll be talking about how low can you go, which is your new single, and uh, that darkness a bit when we come back from Black Dog from Led Zeppelin. What about how low can you go? And we touch the video, and that's it. Okay. Sick. I like it. Okay. Seems like I'm back. Pilly, look at the goddamn screen. I think we're back. Are we back? Yes. All right. So that was Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. That was your. You can actually. I I do a version of that. Uh, that's on YouTube somewhere, and I do it at um. Oh. It's from Bardot, and it's like actually one of my favorite um, ones that's been captured, at Bardot, and uh, and it, you know I'm I'm kind of looking at at the words on my phone because that's what I used to do. Like that was my kind of, off the cuff because they'd be like. Tell Big difference between singing a song by yourself without like prompting from like singing along with it. Right, <laughs> right. Like, oh shit, I realized. <laughs> Have you ever forgotten any lyrics? That yours? Yeah. I forgot my lyrics at my show last week. Yeah. There you go. It happens. Yeah. It happens I, to the best I of us. I jumped in the wrong place. I like into the wild. I didn't do a double chorus or something like that. Whatever. You know, like, yeah. Listen. I mean, it's it's live. It happens. All right. Well, congratulations on your new single, Thanks. the long-awaited "How Low Can You Go." The video is phenomenal. It dropped today, so make sure to check out the single and also the video. Mm -hmm. Shot in Mexico. Seems like there's a little like Day of the Dead inspiration there. Yeah. Like we didn't want to go too dead on. Like even with like her, like you know, uh, we didn't want to go like sh super sugar skull kind yeah. of thing, you know. Um, but yeah, there's like a, you know. Um, and you know, I, it's no secret. I always say how Mexico is very, uh, you know, deep in my heart. You know, and Mexico uh, en la casa. <laughs> and I really like, um, you know, I, I feel very like kind of inspired there always. And you know, I have a, I have a whole bunch of people I know down there through a friend that um, passed away. Yeah, um, I knew him, Renato. Yeah. And so you know, when I when I, and even like you know, his life is like kind of like a. You know, I never really, I didn't really mean to make this, you know, comparison or anything, but his life is like an example of like the dark side of like, you know, uh, being a, you know, 
uh, a wild, wild like kind of like kind of creature of the night who's mm -hmm. like you know just like having a good time. And I think you know uh, how low can it go started with that first line about like we were talking about this this person this artist that I I I we all liked that we were like kind of were like interested in kind of not emulating the song but like something that had that kind of slinky sexy thing to it. And I said, Leah, last time I saw her, we did, you know, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it just started off you from there. You can say it. Coconut yeah. Coconut yeah. And, uh, and it just was like, it became like this kind of, just like almost like a creative writing kind of thing to talk about um, those wild nights and how they kind of like, they, they kind of seep into your whole life and, you know, and how you, you meet people that you may have like, you could have gone down a road with and you don't, you know, like it's just like that. Like, there's a, and then you don't, but like, you can, like, you'll always, like, think, like, oh, what are they doing right now? Right. Or, or what could have happened if what I would have happened, you know? Yeah. Even down from, like, you know, even like friends are like, you know, like, what if I did, you know, stay up, you know, go on a three day bender with mm -hmm. these people that were doing that, you know? Right. Yeah. And all kinds of stuff, like, how that, like, you know, could change your life or, uh, and it's very, uh, yeah, I think it's like this, 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 um, song like this video is like kind of more of like kind of like fantasy kind of like um what if kind of land you know and like and just like trying to explore uh but like that these things also mean a lot you know they're like they they're they're real you know if you're thinking them and they make an impact in your life yeah yeah well well this is the end we're gonna <laughs> leave you guys this with the, the u.s latin premiere of lp's new video how low can you go lp <laughs> It's been hey. such a pleasure. Uh, You're I awesome. You, I love you too. Christian's hug for you. And thank you everyone who tuned into this live stream. Yeah. The, your fans. I mean, I've interview, interviewed Shakira, Gwen Stefani, like nobody has fans like LP. Come on. It's true. I swear to God. It's true. And Sarah yeah. can attest to that. She was helping me. Everybody can attest this. to that. Your fans wow. are the best. You know that too. No, I know. Thank you. I love you guys. I do. Yeah. I do. I do. And um, I'm just, I'm so lucky. I can't wait to get, you know, back out there and like kind of see everybody. And um, I don't know, it's, you know, it's a, it's a wild time. But I think, uh, you know, speaking of like appreciation and feeling responsible, it's just like, I, I'm going to be like right back out there appreciating and feeling, um, you know, responsible for these beautiful people who like my shit. And we can't wait for that. So thank you again, LP. Thank you, everybody, for thank tuning in. And here is How yeah. Low Can You Go, LP's new single.